Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I need another card, another anniversary card, so I thought I would record the process at the same time. All that I've done is I've pulled out some colours and I've cut the card. So I've got a piece of square card, five and a half inches square. It's all Pink Frog Super Smooth 300 GSM. So the piece I'm working on is five and a half inches square. My mat and layer is five and three quarter inches square. And my card blank is six and a half inches square. So we're going to work on the five and a half inch piece. Now, it's an anniversary card, so I thought I'd use the uh, branched heart. So what I'm going to do is take the heart. I've sort of got an idea in my head, but it's obviously if those ideas work, isn't it? So let's just, this is very well used, this stamp set. Right, let's just grab my acrylic block. And then I've got a piece of copier paper. So if I just fold that copier paper in half. Do you know, there's always something that I just don't grab. So I've got my Nocturne ink. Doesn't matter really what colour ink. So it's that way isn't it yes so i'm going to stamp the shape of the heart onto a piece of copier paper so just sort of the heart the heart side and i'm just going to stamp that onto a piece of copier paper so the copier paper is folded in half and I'm stamping with this line on the fold line. Doesn't even have to be stamped perfect. So what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to go and follow the shape of the heart just a little bit bigger. And this is a way you can change the heart stamp because if you want then you can just have a full heart that is this, this the right shape and it matches perfectly and you can have something different on this side then if you wish it's entirely up to you but it's a good way to to get the heart and then you've got exactly the same shape as the actual stamp but now i've cut it a little bit bigger. So I've now got this template. Just make sure I can see through the card. And I'm going to faff like mad. I can see where my card is. So let's just place it. And I will faff and faff and faff. Because if I'm doing a special card, that's just what I do. OK, you can hold this in place if you wish with some low tack tape. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to wing it. I'm going to take tea dye. So I'm going to use my blending brushes, one of the larger blending brushes. And I'm going to take tea dye. Let's just give that a really good blend. Now, what I'm going to do is just sweep down onto the piece of paper. So I'm just sweeping that colour down onto that piece of paper. And the reason that I'm sweeping rather than sort of going like this is the paper is obviously not super strong as a template for the stencil. So the sweeping action might make it a little bit easier for you 
if you find that you're sort of bending that paper. What I'm going to do is keep adding ink whilst my hand is in place. Just blend that ink over. Now I want more, I'm not bothered about the centre area, I want more of that ink. Around the outer edge. I've got this template now. but I've got most of the area around the outer edge and it's the shape of the heart that I've cut out. So let's just take the heart and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab another piece of card. So the idea is in my head, but whether it works or not are two different things. So it's for an anniversary, a ruby anniversary. So I've got ruby paint and eggplant paint from Dina Wakely. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ruby actually picked one up that's actually got plenty of paint in I don't normally do that so I've got a piece of cotton dry foam you can use the blending tools and I'm going to pick up the ruby paint now what I would recommend is that you just put a small amount of paint on there initially so that you don't use too much now you don't want blobs of that paint you want to make sure that, that paint is worked in to that cotton dry foam and what I mean by that is that it's got no blobs and so we don't get in a mess let's just clean the little bit of paint that's there and what I'm going to do is just dab the little bit of paint I've got And then I'm just going to give that a little spritz with water. It may not be enough paint, but we shall see. Let's just place it here. I was going to stamp it bang in the middle of the card to cut out like I normally do. And if it doesn't stamp quite how I want to, I'd have no space then on the other side. But that's me all over. There we go. I've got the shape. That's exactly what I want. Now, I've used acrylic paint. So let's just give that a really good wipe. You don't want to leave that acrylic paint on there. There we go. I have got some kitchen roll out here. I'm not going to rub because I don't want to apply those um, fibres from the kitchen roll to my stamp. Well, that should be okay. Okay, so I've now got the shape of the heart on there and then I'm going to take my water brush that isn't a water brush and I'm going to give this some depth. So what I'm showing you is when you've got a stamp, if you want the stamp to look a bit different, you can make it look different. So I'm going to use the ruby paint and I'm going to use the eggplant. Now, if I use, let me just, if I bring this template in with Creators, you can see how much bigger that template is. Just because then I will end up with a little um, shadow. I've created my own matten layer. Do you know, I couldn't think what I was trying to say. Right, so let's take the water brush. Let's make sure that you can see that. So I've got eggplant and I've got ruby so just like you would let's grab this kitchen roll you know kitchen roll is my friend just to make sure I've not got too much water and then I'm going to start with the dark eggplant just here just along there and then I'm just going to blend that out and now I've got the shape of my heart and then I'm going to take the ruby. And what I want is nice depth of colour. 
So I'm picking that ruby up. And what I'm not doing is using too much water. Just a little tiny amount because I want to have a good amount of depth. Just like I would if I was having pencils. Just in exactly the same way as if I was painting with pencils. Look how much, look how much, look how little water I've got on there because my brush is getting very flat and you can see. Now, there's no depth in there whatsoever. So let's grab a little bit more of that darker colour. And let's just take that dark colour. So you can just change your whole feel of your stamp. So then a little bit of water and we'll just take the excess off and then we'll pick up the ruby. And I'm painting as if I was with any pencils that I was using just to build up the depth of that colour. And I really don't need much skill to do this. But what I do want is I want it to look really, really rich depth to that. Because it's for a ruby wedding anniversary. And I want to give really good depth now if you, you if you do this whilst the paints are still wet it works beautifully don't try and do it with the paints completely dry it's not going to work it just isn't so we'll grab we can even actually let's see if we can just add even more richness of that ruby Whilst the paint is still wet, just so that it looks very ruby-like. Now you can see I've got the lovely shape of that, that heart. There we go. So we've got a beautiful shape of that heart now that I can keep. So let's give the brush a little bit of a clean. And you can see you hardly need any paint at all. And you can see the depth that you can get, but we haven't finished yet. Let's just give a little bit more Look, how, look at the pigment in the paint because you can see from my brush I haven't got a jar here with the water in which I should really but you can see the depth of that paint how many times I'm using the water and still getting that colour from there so what I'm going to do now is cut out this heart. But what I want to do, where's my what colour you want? Do you know I'm terrible, I don't put the colours back where I'm supposed to. So there is going to be cutting out involved in this because that's me all over. What I'm going to do is just try the strawberry, do you know, I was looking for the stamp then. I've got the strawberry Versafine Claire. Let's take that strawberry Versafine Claire. So 
Let's have a look at the strawberry. Now, this has had the black ink on there. It has had the ruby paint on there. And it's beautiful because it's picked some of that all up. Now, I'm going to do some cutting out. Now, I know most of you don't want to do the cutting out. That's fine. Don't cut out. Just stamp directly onto the card. But if I'm doing a special card, then for me, it is truly worth it. It's worth it for the recipient to have a truly beautiful card. And what I'm trying to show you is how a stamp designed one way can look completely different another way. And it's not complicated. I'm just following the lines around. I'm not cutting out all the branches as such. I'm just leaving some of the white areas in the branches so I've got that stability when I cut out. Now this side is very wet so just be aware of that. Now because I had the ruby paint on there and I still had some of the black ink on there what that do has done is beautifully sort of darkened down the red the strawberry versifying clair and it's made it look more sort of wine ruby color just perfect so I'm just cutting this out I love testing stamps, showing how good the designs are. It's just me all over and showing something that was in my head if it will work. And trust me, I'll show you if it doesn't work as well. I've done that many times. So I'm just leaving a little white border and just leaving some of the branches now for this card the cutting out is going to add so much it gives depth it gives movement it gives definition it gives brightness because of the touches of white it works really well And for a special couple, it's it's not, you know, too much effort. I'm going to cut down there just to create a card. It takes a little bit more time. I'm forgetting. To, have I cut down there? Yes, you have. I was missing the little bit then that... I'm leaving a little white gap, one that will add to the brightness of the design. Just lift the whole design as well. the way around just to there because I want to cut this inner out so if I keep it in the card it will give me that stability now if I took if I cut it out I won't have that stability of the, it being in the card Honestly, it's going to take me a little bit of time because I just want the skeleton. And you have to go in and out of the card 
just to get that skeleton. There we go. Let's take the skeleton of the tree. And again, doesn't the stamp look different just as the skeleton of the tree? So if you'd wanted to add something different to the inside, you've got the skeleton of the tree. I've shown you how to make a matten layer that's bigger using the same design. Now let's cut this out. Now do I want... I'm just going to keep that so. Um, let's add these as well. Do I just want, because I want more of that colour. Right, let's just cut this half out here. Just the, So I'm going on the inside of this line where I've painted now again if I want to I've got a heart that looks completely different than the heart let's grab the heart again the heart stamp my stamps keep falling off because they need a good clean look at the heart here looks completely different just totally different right you can also even put this back in and mat and layer your design as well, should you wish. Just so many ways you can change the design. You can even have the heart here, turn that over so it's the other half of the heart and colour that in the ruby. So there's ways to make it look completely different. Right, so what I'm going to do now to move this all out of the way. I've got bits of heart everywhere. So what I'm going to do then, we're going to give that stamp a little bit of a clean. And then you're going to use the same copy of paper because you haven't pulled any more copy of paper out. And you're just going to blot that moisture just so you can see the moisture that I've blotted. And by using the copy of paper, it'll really get in there with the moisture. If it doesn't, just dab with your kitchen roll, just to make sure you've got that moisture. I do love to faff, I did tell you that. Now, I don't have to use this text now, if I don't want to use this text. So now, where's my... I can use my normal text stamp, which is TE11. So let's grab TE11 background elements. Now I find nothing nicer than ruby with touches of gold. I always find it really appealing. So we'll grab our heat tool. Now, this was all in my head in the evening when I went to bed. It's always when I go to bed, thinking about the design I was going to do. Okay. There's the mark, ink. Now, you've seen that I've added that paint on there. So, we need to add some anti-static bag because we want the embossing just to stick where I stamp. You don't want it to stick all over the heart. Now, gold embossing powder is a lot worse for that. If you've got static, it the, the bits of the gold embossing stick everywhere, which is fine just with little bits, but you don't want it everywhere because that just sort of changes your whole design. 
so I've got my Versamark ink and then I'm just going to add, I'm going to place the text on there and I'm just going to use one finger. And you know, I'm going to use the same piece of copy of paper that I've used for everything. This gold embossing powder, is it actually open? Believe it or not, it's not actually open. I think I've run out of gold. There we go. So let's just add. Nobody needs to tip that much gold embossing powder for the tiniest amount of text. So now I can see where I've got that gold text. You won't see that because the camera's not that good. Let's just add a little bit more again. Now don't forget, I'm making a card, oh, look at me. a special card. So it deserves me to make that extra effort. And that's exactly what I am doing. I want to make a really luxurious card by making extra effort. And by making my stamp appear a little bit different. I love showing you how you can make your stamps look different. And this is why for me, stamps are wonderful in the craft industry. There we go. So I've got my gold embossing on there, which you probably can't see, but we'll lift that up so that you can see. And there's an example here as well on this copy of paper. Let me just grab it up. Shows exactly why you use an anti-static bag. Look how the gold embossing sticks to any moisture. So that's why you use the anti-static bag, so that your gold embossing, let me see if I can lift that, is just like that. So let's give that a heat. Heat your heat tool up. that a really good heat. Use your scissors, not your finger, Tracy, and then heat your embossing. And I just think that this adds some wonderful opulence to the design. especially for that ruby wedding. Now, what I've done, I can't stand me. I love it when it works how I want it. What I've done now is I've changed the whole design because I've got, it's probably going to, yes, it, hang on a minute. So you could just fit it inside like so or you wouldn't want to add it on top, would you? Because you'd, I'm just showing you here, let's move all this embossing powder. You don't want to hide that skeleton because the pop of white just gives it some life. Let me just lift you this up. But doesn't the gold just give that some opulence? And if you wanted to, like I showed before, you could, did I cut away too much on that? Oh no, it's like that. You could add the other part of the heart on the opposite side. You could use your stencil and add it on the opposite side so that you've got two parts of the same heart. So let's come in. Uh, yes, do you like how I don't know what I'm doing? So now I've got the heart on here, but I've got the 
show you how this goes, like so. I've got a matte and layer of the brown colour underneath. The heart will go just like this on the top. Let me show you. Just like, yes, just like that. But I need to build some more layers of the twig. Now, what I'm going to do is, we've added this here. We're now going to spritz with water, plenty of water, so that that bleeds out. Come on, wick out. That's it. I want that to wick out. And I'm just going to let that do its thing. Can you see it wicking out like so? Let's put it somewhere where you can see that wicking out. You can just dab around the very edge of your card, just so you're not picking a wet card up. But you can see that's wicked out. So that I've naturally got some of that colour in the background. I've also got plenty of that water on my non-stick craft sheet. And let's just hold that on there so that that just stays straight. So what I've done is I've just put my spritzer bottle on the top of there just so that it continues to wick out. I'm now going to add this onto here just whilst it's like this. So I'm going to take a little heart that I've cut out. Like so. I'm going to add that on the top. Like so. And you can just give that a little bit. There we go. So I've now got the heart that looks completely different background just there. So you've got a beautiful heart there. Now I want some more dimension to that so that it is really dimensional. So I'm going to take, definitely not that piece of card because we've used it all. We're going to take this card. Now, you would leave it like that if you don't want to follow all my step-by-steps. But don't forget, I'm making this into a really luxurious card. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of black onto the background, very little. And then I'm going to take my red, which I'm not going to worry about, over the top because I can just swipe it across a piece of card just to clean that ink pad a little bit. So I'm going to, now this is 300 GSM, so it will give me that thickness that I want. There we go. I like the, just the, the bit of, not that it matters for this because it's going underneath, Excuse the phone ringing. So how many? I think that two should be enough. And then you can just swipe your ink pad just to remove any contamination of colour. So let's... Bigger scissors would have been better, but let's just do it so that we can put these out a little bit easier. There we go. And I'm just going to cut these out now, just to give me more dimension. And again, I'm going to reiterate, this is for a very special 
card. And I don't think taking an hour or so out of your time for a special occasion is much at all. You could easily do the cutting out in front of the TV another day. It's entirely up to you. Now this is going underneath the one I've done. And the idea is that it will give the branches a little bit more depth, thickness of branches, which will look really, really nice. And I don't find this difficult to cut out. Obviously, if you've got dexterity problems, that's different. So this is going underneath. So I don't have to have absolute perfection when I'm cutting out because the one I've done on the top is the perfect one. This is to give the branches some body. I sound like I'm talking about a hairstyle, but it's a bit like that. You're giving it some thickness, more strands so that it's got a little bit more, a little bit more life. And this is the perfect stamp when you are giving it to a couple. Now what you have to remember, for me, it doesn't matter on this occasion that I'm touching the other side. <coughs> But what you have to be aware of, that ink is wet. So you're going to smudge it if you don't blot it and dry it. Just remember that. You do need to blot and dry. But because this is going underneath, I won't have any of that white area should I have smudged any of the ink. Because I won't have this area here. You'll have to excuse the plaster on my finger because if you're a gardener, honestly, I've always got a plaster on my finger at some stage. If I haven't stuck my finger on a thorn or something, it's always the same. So I'm going to go round now. Now this is, I don't need necessarily the white edge on this because this is just to give the heart that's going on the top some body there we go so I want it to give it some lift okay so now when I add this the branches have got more thickness and it just gives it more definition okay so what I'm going to do now is take the heart and just apply that just on the top. You don't want to squash that down too much. You want to have that depth. And like me, you will faff a little bit. So instead of 300 GSM now, it's like 600 GSM because I've got those depth of branches. Now, if I add the next one, it's like having 900 GSM. So it works beautifully. So I'm then going to cut this out. Just the branches again just to give me even more body to those branches. And by leaving, well not like that, by leaving a little bit 
of that white area around the outside just makes that a little bit easier just to cut out. It also, all, also, also makes it easier if you turn your card rather than your hand into funny positions. If you turn the card, it takes the pressure off this hand by using this hand to turn the card. So my other hand is doing the cutting, but it's I'm not keeping my hand tense, so it takes the pressure off that. And I just think this makes a beautiful card for a special occasion. Don't forget this is going underneath again. So it's going right at the bottom. And the important thing here is that it just adds more depth to those branches. That's the important thing. So they look more like branches than sparse little twigs. I want it to be full of life. And flicking card everywhere. Little bits of white card. I've got an itchy nose. What does that mean? So let's... I don't want any arguments if it means that. I'm using curved Pergamano scissors. If you can get curved nail scissors, I'm sure that can do the same thing as well. And then we'll go all round the heart. All the way down. There we go. Let's move all these. I've even got bits of card. This is the heart. That is absolute the card is absolutely soaking wet, but I've now got that bleed of colour. Just what I want. So now I'm going to add this to this card using my pin flare glue. And again, do not flatten that down because you want the dimension because it's like 900 GSM. Look at, let's just try and hold that. Look at the branches. It just gives it more depth and it's a more solid piece. It really does work quite nicely. Let's just push this up for a moment. go. I will go round the edges with some paint. Let's give this a little bit of a dry. Just turn it over. You don't want that card to break down too much. Now, if I wasn't recording this, I would just let this dry naturally but even if you wanted to do a very simple anniversary card you could just put a text there and it would just work really nicely i'm not going to dry that completely yet so what i'm going to do is just i think i can treat myself to a clean wipe just so i don't get any contamination Just going to give my stamp a little bit of a, su a surface clean. 
Do you hear me heat tool nearly? So I'm just giving that a little bit of a surface clean. There we go. Look at this embossing powder on here now. And what I'm going to do is just a little bit, let's move that wipe out of the way, a little bit of work on the background. So I'm going to take the tea dye and I'm going to add a little bit of the tea dye stamping before I stick the heart down just so that it's coming out of that heart. And this is going to be nice and subtle, but I want something not too over the top in the background. And stamping with the tea dye oxide works really nicely. And again, this stamp comes to the rescue. It is just wonderful. It gives me something without being too overpowering and it's just what I want and it's just what I need. Just one, one hand. Now don't forget, when we have used oxide ink on our stamp, just give that a wipe. And the reason for that is because if we go and use our oxide ink, uh, our Versafine Claire inks on top of the oxide, it will be affected, it won't be as crisp. So just so that you can see that, just beautiful. It just adds the right amount of something. So then what I've got, I can place my heart on here and I've got a shadow now, an automatic shadow that is the right shape. So you can even bring it in a bit but it's the shadow that's the right shape for that heart. Now, you wouldn't try and do this, what I'm about to do now, unless it was dry, but obviously I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to take the ruby paint and then I'm just going to go around the edges with the ruby paint try not to squash which i am squashing so we'll just be careful there we go and then we'll just go around the edges here i can easily move this back because it's it's not dry so just adding just around there and then if you've flattened it a bit, I haven't, if you have flattened it a little bit, just lift it up with some tweezers. So what I'm going to do now is, I don't know whether I've got any, bear with me. Let me lift this up. I don't know whether I've got any gold. I'm now going to mix around. Bear with me a second. I've found it. This is like some wire that I had. That it's it's sort of, I don't know if you can see that, sort of twisted. So I'm going to take some of this white and I'm going to end up faffing, you do know that. You know, like I would with cotton, this is going to be not easy. I just thought I'd let you know that because look how it bounces. It's only a thin wire. I'll show you how thin it is. It just bends. So it's a very thin wire. 
I'm just going to add. I'm not going to add, I'm going to faff because that's me all over. Don't forget, I'm trying to add opulence to this design. So there's there's gold in there. For the recipient, they can feel and touch that. I'm then going to add some white cotton, again, for texture, to give it a little bit more richness in design, to make it look like it's that really special card. So let's just pull all these fibres out just so the, the recipient can feel and see all those textures because my heart will then, not my personal heart, but the heart will go on there. So what I'm going to do now, and this does need 24 hours to dry. So if you're making it for somebody special, don't forget to do it in plenty of time so that you're not giving them a card that is wet. What I want to do now is add layers of that pin flare. You don't have to have pin flare. You can have pieces of card, pieces of mount board, and adhere the mount board to the back of the heart. And then you can just drop it on the surface like I've just done. We'll clear that up in a second. But because I'm using pin flare, I need to make sure, let me just clean that up. I always end up with a bit of glue on there. I just need to make sure that that is pressed down. And I don't mean flattening it. Let me just show you. I mean, so for instance, let's press down there. Just so that you, you grab hold of the fibres and the wire. So you want the pin flare to grab hold of that, but you want it to have that dimension on there to make it look a little bit special. And in real life, you can see the shadow just around here that makes it extra special. So let's leave that on one side. I've got little bits of white card everywhere. So then I want to grab we can now put, where's my little, we can put the heart back on here. What does it say on there? Oh yeah. Take a smaller acrylic block. Now I end up with stamps everywhere. I then want to take the little bird here from number four stamp set. Look, that one's also falling off because it's well used. You just give them a little wash or a wipe and the stickiness is all back there. So let's, we've got a little bit of scrap of card here. Mm -hmm. Let me just think. Just grabbing Portobello. Let's add some sand dune, which is very pale. It might not be what I want, but I won't know until I test. A little bit of Portobello. Just stamp it on the slant because it will just fit on the card then. Oh yes, so I've now got a little bird that has got the portobello and the sand dune on there. Coordinates with my project rather nicely. And I'm just going to make the tiniest, tiniest little white border.
just around the little bead. Again, to make it easier for yourself, if you cut out the legs first, which I didn't do to make it easier for myself, it is easier because you've got the bird still in the card and it gives you that stability to cut out those weaker areas, the little spindly legs, because birds haven't got chunky legs. Well, this bird hasn't anyway. Wish I could say the same for myself. Right, so let's go around. bird that I can just let me just have a look at my that might go there actually because I want some smaller beards let me just go around so what I'm doing now is I'm using the cut and dry foam that had the ruby paint on and just adding a little touch of the ruby to the beard just so he can go there that's it so let's grab some smaller beards again another stamp set <laughs> so I'm going to grab TE12 which Looks like it's out somewhere, which is dangerous, unless I've put it in the wrong place. Probably put it in the wrong place. There it is. Got this little bird here from TE12. Let's just, let's test. Let's do it in the portobello. I think it's just nice in the portobello. I was going to test the black, but I don't think I need to. Well, we'll soon know when I put it against the card. beard which I can use tweezers for there we go that's much better now let me just show you something you have to admit when you are wrong okay I'll show you so that's the portobello let's take the black ink so we'll take our nocturne and this is why you, it is important that you test things before you go ahead and stick anything down. I've got my little beard here in the black. Just bear with me a moment. You don't have to cut both legs out. You can just go around that because it will sort of be hidden by the branches. Let's grab my little tweezers. So we grab these little tweezers. Look how it pops. You, the brown doesn't pop enough. So let's just pick that up with my tweezers. 
add a little bit of adhesive and then I can just faff. Add the little bead there. Of course, I'm going to add another little bead. And we're going to add three little beads. TE12. Let's just cut that so we get rid of all that extra bit of card. And I'm not cutting out the legs, I'm just sort of going around them because they're just hidden with the branches. Try not to hold your breath like I sometimes do. Don't ask me why I do that. There's one little bead. I get so engrossed. Not a good thing. I forget to breathe. There we go. Don't chop his beak off because he definitely ain't going to look like a bird with no beak. Just go around the little beads. So I've got my two little beards now, and if I use my tweezers, I can faff as much as I wish with the placement. Just a little bit of adhesive. Just to add the little beard. Miracles never cease, it's actually the actual um, adhesive is working. The tweezers, let's make sure that is stuck on there. You can pull out some of the fibres as well if you wish. Do I want the black beard down here? I definitely don't want the brown one anyway. So let's take... You see, that's when you know you have to keep playing with your stamps. The black beard just pops a lot more. Again, just make sure that you don't touch that black ink because you don't want to smudge that. So this is the beard from TE4. And again, not practicing what I preach, forgetting to Cut out the legs first. I need to put the fan on. I am boiling. That's with being engrossed. There we go. Just Go around those little legs. That's it. Okay. 
just leaving a very tiny, very tiny white. give that a little bit of definition as well and that definitely is much better and again if you're not happy with the placement of your heart you can still move that so we'll add a little bit of definition onto the bird just on the body like so So lots of little um, tips with this card. I'm then going to use my Posca pen just to just add a few little touches to the beard. Just to make that pop a little bit more we don't want that beard to be floating so let's just give that now we need to remember that we had that red color on there and we still have that red color on there so we definitely don't want that when we blend out so that that beard is definitely looks like he is grounded but be prepared just to experiment a little bit I'm now going to take hmm let me just I've got it's like I'll shake that and then go for something else I've got a gold Posca pen. And let's add some of that gold. You want that opulence. So just adding a few of the gold there we go I still want that so let's just wipe around our surface just in case there are any sort of stray gold touches and whilst this sort of dries because we're going to put the word on there but whilst that dries let's just leave that on one side at the moment and then take the five and a oh somebody just keeps ringing me so we're going to use the five and three quarters inch and we're just going to you don't even have to be perfect we're creating our own mat and layer with the gold So you don't need a straight line because it's just, I'm just making sure I get the edge of the card. You can literally just colour that in. So we're creating our own mat and layer. Obviously, if you've got your gold card, then wonderful. You can use your gold card. I don't tend to buy card, to be honest, apart from white card. So I'm making my own mat and layer. There we go. So let's just clean that up. I can see where the adhesive has been, where it's stuck to the adhesive, which is handy. Because then I have to make sure that it goes nicely on the mat and lay it. Yes, it does go 
nicely on that mat and layer. The gold takes a little bit longer to dry. You know, the gold splatters. So oh, I'll just drop the card. My hands aren't big enough. So we're just going to add plenty of adhesive just to the just to the card and I'm adding more adhesive than I would normally and the only reason for that is because we've got that little bit of bend in the card so because you've got that little bit of bend in the card I am just using a little bit more adhesive and just making sure I press in the center to make sure where that moisture has been that we do get that stuck down. I can't turn the card over because this is dimensional and we don't want to squash that. So I'm sort of bending the back of the card so that it makes contact. I've now got a gold mat, which works beautifully. I'm then going to add that just to the six and a half inch square card blank, which is going to be a lot easier now. I've stuck that piece down. So let's stick that down. sure the card is facing the right way like so just press that down again press in the center just so you don't get any air pockets now you want that gold to go through to the card blank here. So let's just add a few little splatters just so that it goes to the edge of the card as well so that that is included. Let's just give a little bit of a wipe. I've just added so that it spreads over to the card. Now we want some wording. Let's move this heat tool out of the way. Now what I didn't cut out was the insert, but I will put an insert in. But you could do that. What I'm going to do is just add the little bird on the inside. Um, words. And I think each day is a treasure you don't have to be predictable and put happy anniversary because each day is a treasure every anniversary not just the one anniversary is a treasure um, we've got a little look at the i just think i'm down to my last bit of card there i don't think i can use that bit let's use the bit here so we can use each day is a treasure. Do you know, it would help if the actual stamp itself was straight. Shall we try again? don't need to press very hard. I'm going to use my larger scissors and then let's just let's leave it long for the moment. Let's just until I decide. Do, do I want that? I think 
I'm going to cut it. Do you like how I don't really know? There we go. So I've got the, honestly, one card and I have stuff absolutely everywhere. Just bear with me. I just don't know whether... do know that I'm going to faff for England because I want it in the branches. Well, of course I want it in the branches. Of course I want to make it as difficult as possible. You two can faff as much as me. Oh, you see, I'll end up cut. I'll end up stamping this all over again. See, I like that piece. Oh, I've got to stamp it. I told you I'd end up stamping it again. Let's do the treasure bit again. The card was too thick. Oh, I can be a nuisance when I'm... The sentiment sometimes can take me ages. Just a sentiment. In with the sort of branches. Yes, okay. And you do realise that I am then going to be a complete pain. Let's take this card. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a gold edge to each piece. Because these are the sort of luxurious touches. So I need a bit of adhesive on the right hand side. Just to catch that. I'll end up twisting little branches. There we go. Just need to hold that down for a few seconds just so that that right hand side just grabs. We don't want any of that adhesive showing. And then a treasure. The difference it makes with having the gold edge. Again, I'm at the advantage of seeing the card in the flesh and it just looks totally different when you look at things in the flesh. There we go. Again, we want that adhesive on the right hand side. Just make sure that that definitely grabs hold. And then Make sure that you've got a branch that's going over. Just so that you can see, you've got that beautiful gold touches just on there. You can see that it's got the dimension and it is 900 GSM thick. So it works nicely, we've got that gold just looks just beautiful. Right, am I going to be a complete pain now? 
this is what I do when I'm making a special card. One, I make a complete mess. That's what. That's one definite thing. Let me just put that little beard back. Put the sentiment back. This is completely filthy. Now let me look at this. I need that down the bottom. This is what happens when you decide you want something. Okay. So I'm going to take the Versifying Claire Strawberry. And I've put that down the bottom of my acrylic block. And of course, any sensible person would be doing this first before you actually stuck the card together. But there's always an extra little bit that I want to do. Where's my white pen? Because I'm just going to add a little touch there. And then we're just going to add a tiny bit of shading just around the heart. You don't want it to be too much. You don't want it to take over the card. So I'm just touching with a little bit of that water. And there you go. This, these hearts give balance to the beard, but just so that you can see. And that makes a beautiful anniversary card. If you wanted to, with it being a ruby one, you can even, let's just take these. So like I say, I'm going now and then I don't go. I'm, I'm hilarious. If you want to, one of your things is two of my little things have fallen off because they are so well used. So let's grab the four. What did I do with the acrylic block? Let's grab the four and the zero. I've put things in the wrong place here. That's it. Grab the zero. You don't have to do this, but you can. Or naught four. Do you think I could put that on the card? Naught four. So you can then cut out your little. Tags. And because I've got these curved scissors, it really sort of gets in there. There's the four. And then the O. There we go. So we've got the, the four and the O. Honestly, these are just all falling off here. They're just so well used. Most of my stamps are well used. There we go. So you've got the four and the O. You can bring this in and then we can, we can stick them together after. So let's just stick those together. 
and then I'll try and pick them up because this is what I do every time. So just place that on there. Let's grab a little bit of that adhesive off there. I don't want any adhesive showing. And any sensible person would just wait for that to harden off. Not me. I'll just keep dropping it. There we go. Oh, yes. See, it just isn't too much. That's just nice. For that 40th wedding anniversary, Tracy will spend ages trying to make sure that that sticks. You're not sticking, definitely not. What are you doing? I know what that's where I want me. Thank you. I'm now talking to a piece of card. Let's put my tweezers. I have now, I promise I've finished now. There we go. Ruby wedding anniversary card. So I hope you enjoyed that demonstration and showing you how you can change your stamps, how you can adapt them, how you can make them look completely different. Now, don't forget your insert. I will add an insert to the card. So love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.